in order to maintain and prolong the life of your scope it is important that they are cleaned thoroughly as soon as possible after the procedure but as we've already gone through as long as you've got air and water coming through the scope and the, the patient tubes have been wiped down with a disinfectant wipe then we should be fine first of all we're going to use the enzymatic which is designed to eat protein and pathology this is not very nice chemistry so it is important to always wear gloves when you when you're using enzymatic otherwise it will cause damage to, to, your, to your hands long term first thing we need to do is to attach our leak tester and again we pump it up to 180 milligrams of mercury now this scope here is fully submersible if you're not sure if your scope is submersible, please ring our technical department, give them the make and the model of the scope, and they will tell you the correct cleaning protocols. I know this one's fully submersible. It has a blue ring around the outside of the, um, the eyepiece. Everything apart from the leak tester will now be immersed into the enzymatic. It's important to keep the leak tester dry. And what we want here is nice big loops we don't want to cause any sort of kinks or anything in the scope keep an eye on the pressure the pressure may drop slightly only by a couple of milligrams of mercury purely and simply because it's cold water in there all you need to do is just top that up slightly so that remains outside what we need to do is to flush the inner channel with enzymatic and to do that we have to use these flushing adapters which come as part of your kit. In order to fit these, we have to remove the blue and the red buttons. Please be careful not to lose these buttons because they are designed to fit the particular scope that they are supplied with. You cannot mix and match them with, uh, with other scopes. So the long stem goes into the blue port and the short one goes into the red. Press down and push forward to lock them into place and using a 60 mil syringe we suck up the enzymatic and we flush it through the channels we need to do this two or three times in order to remove any loose pathology that may be in, in the channel and ideally you don't want to see any bubbles coming through You just want a good stream of, of fluid. The next thing we're going to do is to flush the channels through to remove any pathology that may be in there. So we remove the flushing adapter and we get our cleaning brush. The cleaning brush is the brush with the ball on the end. And as you can see, it has a distinctive ball on the end. That's to push any pathology through that may be trapped. Uh, inside of the scope, more so if you've done colonoscopies and things like that, you want to really make sure that it is clean. There are actually three places that we're going to brush. There are two in the suction port, which is the red port here, and one in the biopsy port, which is here. The first port we're going to go through is the one which is straight ahead. And again, nice short movements, so we don't cause any kinking. That will cause a problem with the brush and it will eventually um, cause damage to the inside of the skull. So by feeding this through, nice short movements, this will now appear at the suction pump port, which is the port that's shaped like a Christmas tree. And I'll show you this in a second. Okay. So that has actually come through the side of there. So the next port we're going to clean is the biopsy port. Now this is the second hole in the um, suction port and it's about 45 degrees. So by introducing it again, nice short movements. And this will actually come out of the distal tip end, which is the, the end that goes into the patient. 
nice short movement so we don't cause any kinks. Again, okay. so the final port will be the biopsy port, which is on the control body, and again, nice short movements. And once again, the brush will come through the distal tip. flushing adapters and the biopsy cap and again we flush through two or three times and this will remove effectively remove any loose pathology that may be in the inside of the skull. Good blast through, as I said, two or three times. And that's fine. So we then leave that for the, the rest of the 10 minutes um, or uh, follow your, your manufacturer's guidelines as to the length of time it has to be in. Don't ever leave your scope in over and above the allotted time. That is important. Um, if you've used any um, biopsy forceps or cleaning brushes or what have you, you can actually use the same enzymatic, uh, clean your brushes and everything, endotracheal tubes using exactly the same chemistry. So what we do now is remove your valves, remove the scope from the enzymatic, and we rinse that off with water. We will then make our solution of disinfectant and again follow your manufacturer's guidelines um, as to the dilution rate and the length of time. We then submerge the skull once again in the disinfectant and again making sure that the leak tester remains outside of the chemistry. All we're going to do now is simply brush, flush through two or three times. No need to brush again, you've already gone through that with the, the enzymatic. And all we're doing now is we're actually flushing, disinfecting through the ports to get rid of any enzymatic that may be inside of the, the scope. So two or three times. Put your valves back in and again any cleaning brushes or anything that they've used and leave for the allotted time. Once the, the time is expired, we simply remove the scope. And we get rid of the disinfectant and we fill our sink with cold water doesn't need to be sterile water or uh, deionized water, but if you use something like a, a molten sterilizing fluid, that's absolutely perfect to, uh, to carry out the final flush for the skull. Once you've done that, then we would release the pressure from the skull. Remove the leak tester. Get that out of the way. And we dry the scope off. Make sure you put your buttons back on. And by holding the scope up, then we get rid of any excess fluid that may be in there. So using a lint free cloth 
towel. Just try to scope off as much as you possibly can before storage. In order to help dry the channel of the scope, you can actually fit this back into your light box and without connecting the water bottle, turn on your pump and by pressing the blue button and putting your finger over that, uh, the, the air and water port, and pressing them both down, what will happen is any air that's in there and any water will be blasted out through the distal tip um, before storage.